Ina alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. We're continuing with our topic of enjoining good and forbidding evil. And we spoke about yesterday how whenever a person enjoins the good and forbids the evil, he or she will be subjected to tests and trials. Because first of all, this is the whole purpose of our creation. Allah created us to worship him. He put us here on this earth to be tested in our belief in him. And for every bit of knowledge that we gain, we move closer in our relationship with Allah. And once we move closer in our relationship with him, he will send tests and trials to see if we are worthy of that relationship. So in joining good and forbidding evil, it contains tests and trials. And also not only do you have the tests and trials from Allah, but also your own personal trials due to your own temptations. And this is why there appears amongst us some Muslims who rather than try to do anything when they see evil around them, they use their fear of their temptations as an excuse to do nothing. Why is it that Muslims, so many Muslims walk around in a bubble, ignoring what they see, ignoring what's going on? Well, you know, you will hear them say, well, I'm just afraid. I don't want to expose myself to that because I'm not a scholar. I'm not strong. I'm weak too. And I don't want to fall victim. Well, guess what Allah says about people like this. Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning among them are those who say, excuse me and do not expose me to temptation. But guess what? They have already fallen for temptation. What does this mean? What does this mean? This is a powerful verse. And so many Muslims today use that type of wording. Oh, I, I have to worry about myself. I don't have time. I could care less what other people are doing. It's all about me because I got to save myself. And you know, I'm afraid that I might end up giving in to my desires. Well, what happened was during the time of the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is when the prophet received word that the Romans, that the Romans were plotting and planning to attack the Muslims. So the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered the men, and remember we talked about in our previous class how after uh, the conquest of Mecca, after the conquest of Mecca, you know, this is when Arabia became, you know, an Islamic state, the whole peninsula, but many people converted to Islam, but their faith was not yet instilled in their hearts. They were hypocrites. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received word that the Romans were plotting to come to Mecca to fight against the Muslims, the Prophet ordered the people to prepare for battle. He and the people had just converted. He said, everybody, you know, get horses and get whatever you have. We're gonna have to go out and try to intercept, intercept the Romans and keep them from coming here to, uh, to attack us. And when the prophet gave this announcement, one man who had just converted, he stood up and he said, um, oh prophet, he said, I have never in my life seen a white woman before, okay? He said, and I heard that the white women of the Romans are very beautiful. He said, and everybody knows that I have a problem controlling my desires. He said, I just became Muslim. I'm afraid that if I see a white woman, you know, I'm going to end up fornicating, falling back into sin. He, 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 you know, that's what he did. He laughed after saying it. Okay. And so that's when Allah sent down the verse saying, among them is the man who says, 
excuse me, but don't expose me to the temptation. But guess what? He has already fallen for the temptation. In other words, what Allah is saying is he don't have to worry about going on the battlefield and falling victim to fornication because he's seen a white woman. The fact that he is disobeying me as your Lord and he's disobeying you proves that he already is an unbeliever. So that's what Allah meant by that. And that's the same way we look at those type of people today. They'll use, you know, this as an excuse to not enjoying the good, to not forbid the evil. Well, I just don't want to end up falling into it, the evil myself. You've already fallen into it. The fact that you're doing nothing at all shows that you've already fallen victim to the shayateen, okay? So, you know, we have to be careful of that. That's one group of people. But then there's another group of people when they see the evil, they want to try to stop it and they call themselves taking actions to do so. But the actions that they take create greater chaos and greater temptation because they don't have the knowledge. They don't have the proper understanding of Islam. And this is a big problem today. This is what leads to so many conflicts for Muslims today. And this is why Allah is sending Corona and all these other calamities upon us. Because you got a bunch of people calling themselves and joining good and forbidding evil. But due to their ignorance and due to the fact that they don't possess the proper characteristics needed to do so, they cause more problems. They make it hard for the people like me. They make it hard for a, a person like me here in America. Here in America, trying to teach Islam and its truthfulness based on the Quran and the authentic Sunnah with the understanding of the companions. It's hard for me to convey the truth in America because there's a bunch of women and men here perpetrating the truth in the wrong way. Famous scholars, famous this when they're not really scholars. They're people that you made scholars but they're not really scholars in the sight of Allah. Hold on for one second, guys. Um, my doorbell took, hold on for one second. Let me pause this. Just bear with me. Okay, I'm sorry guys. I forgot that uh my uh the, the where I live at there bring it around uh dinner. They know that certain people don't celebrate the holidays such as myself. So they're bringing around um uh, dinner for people and I thought that was nice. You know, that was nice and to bring me. I don't know what it is. I haven't looked at it yet, but I'll look at it after class. But anyway, guys, um yeah, this is the problem. We have people who call themselves and joining good and forbidding evil, but due to the fact that they don't have the proper knowledge, they don't have the proper understanding of the religion, they end up causing more harm than they do good. Okay? So, you know, we have to be careful because even though most Muslims don't understand this, enjoining good and forbidding evil is an obligation. It's an obligation upon us all, just like prayer is, just like wearing hijab is, just like, you know, uh, Ramadan, fasting during Ramadan is. To neglect it, to neglect it, that's when Allah will bring his punishment. But again, there are certain steps. If you realize that you are a person that doesn't have the correct or the proper knowledge, that doesn't have the correct or proper understanding. And maybe you don't have the characteristics to approach a person the honorable way. Then there's other things you can do. You move to the next step. 
You can make dua for that situation. Make dua for that person. Pray against that evil. But to not do anything at all, that's when Allah will bring his punishment. And again, even if you are by yourself, like say for example, myself, I live alone. When you're by yourself, you still have to enjoin the good and forbid the evil. You still have to resist giving in to your loneliness. Look how many women out there are lonely. So they turn to social media as a means of trying to find a husband. This is transgressing the limits of a law. If a woman wants to get married, we don't go join social media to do that. First of all, you have to have a guardian and you go to your guardian, you tell your guardian that you're interested in getting married. And then your guardian is the one that will then open to pursue a, 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 a righteous husband for you. But when we're by ourselves, it's so easy to log on Facebook, go to a, a group that's looking for wives, and next thing you know, you're private messaging, talking and video chatting with a bunch of men so even when we're by ourselves, we still have to enjoin the good and forbid the evil. And that's why Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning, verily the self is forever ordering itself to do evil. Remember, we all have a jinn assigned to us. That personal jinn never sleeps. He's always trying to get us to transgress the limits. He knows what your strengths are. He knows what your weaknesses are. He knows you're lonely. So he's gonna push you and say, it's okay, that's okay, go on the internet. Try to find you a man there. So even when we're by ourselves, we have to enjoy the good. And a lot of Muslims will come to us and they'll say, what constitutes a congregation? What constitutes a congregation? This is a popular question um, that I get from brothers. Well, whenever you have two or more people together, that constitutes a congregation, okay? That's why congregational prayer becomes obligatory whenever there are two or more Muslims living in the same area. So when you're by yourself, you have to enjoin the good and forbid the evil with yourself. But if another Muslim is there with you, then it becomes an obligation for you to try to help one another in what is good and try to prevent one another from falling into what is evil. And that's why I tell people, you know, you're living at home with your family members, Allah does say, save your soul and your family from the hellfire and join the good and forbid the evil with your brothers and sisters, with your family members, with your wives, your sons, your daughters, because you are, you know, held accountable for these people. Remember the prophet said, every one of us is a guardian over something. A man is a guardian over his wife and children. And a woman is a guardian over her children. So you enjoin the good and forbid the evil with those whom you are guardians over. Okay? If you got siblings, you're the oldest child. The other children look up to you. Enjoin the good, forbid the evil with them. Or even if you're the younger child, you're the one who has the correct understanding of the dean. So try to save, you know, your family from the hellfire by sharing what you learn with them. So again, in joining good and forbidding evil, it is an obligation upon each and every one of us as Muslims. Even if we're alone by ourselves, we have to enjoin with ourselves and forbid with ourselves. And if there's two of us or more together, we have to help each other but to do nothing at all, to do nothing at all. This will e invoke the punishment of a law upon us. And also we have to understand the closer you get to a law, the more a law will test you in your faith. So don't think just because you are practicing the Dean correctly, that a law is not gonna send trials your way. The fact that you are 
practicing the deen correctly, your trials are definitely going to increase. Allah wants you to prove to him that you're doing it for him, that you ain't doing it because you're looking for fame. You want to be another one of these America next top die or whatever or another one of these American uh, uh, mentors or life coaches. So this is something for us to think about. So we'll stop right here. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, inshallah, you can type them on the screen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta